It finally happened. Elon Musk has revealed an incredibly cheap home that is affordable for sustainable living. Yet given Elon Musk's status, that appears conflicting with what one might expect from a tycoon. You know what? The man is a totally different person. Even Musk personally lives in a Tesla home that is even cheaper. By the end of this video, you will know if this house is for you or not. Join me today in this video as we explore Elon Musk's new $15,000 Tesla house. Well, Elon's bag has never been empty, in actuality. Before Tesla was successful in making electric cars available for purchase by the general public, they supplied 3,100 roadsters for an approximate price of $109,000. He started a production line at his firm in San Francisco to build a new model of car. Before we start, first clear your mind with the tiny house movement. There is presently a 100,000 unit shortlisted for the residences because of their popularity. The tiny house movement supports modest small housing. Small houses often range in size from 100 to 400 square feet. The majority of tiny homes are constructed on trucks so they can be relocated easily. They can be utilized as vacation homes or vacation rentals as a guest house in addition to their common use as permanent residences. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, is currently considering the possibility of postponing his work on developing electric automobiles by focusing on a recent favorite project. One such initiative that might turn out to be the future breakthrough in the real estate and housing industries is the creation of moderately priced homes. It is just wow, how a human brain could think so big. We are all surprised now that a Tesla is traveling across Australia in a tiny apartment that is entirely run by renewable power. Here are some things to consider if you're thinking about buying a Tesla tiny house. There are some aspects you should be aware of if you're interested in a little casita. First off, there is a 100,000 unit list for the dwellings at the moment. Second, just a few markets can purchase the residences. I know what you're thinking. Why are people interested in these tiny houses? Well, here's the answer. People are attracted to living in tiny homes for a variety of reasons. Some people wish to live smaller, simpler lifestyles. Others are drawn to tiny homes because of their affordable ownership costs and environmental friendliness. And some individuals simply find them to be quite cute and adorable. Moreover, who doesn't want to live in such a safe and eco-friendly house? The tiny house movement has received a lot of support for Elon Musk's buying of a boxable tiny house. That person chose to live simply in a modest place, even though they were highly affluent and could purchase whatever type of home they want. Others may be encouraged to think about doing the same by this. Let's jump to the history of this tiny house of $15,000. In March and April 2014, Tesla reported spending $2.6 billion to Solar City. After that, it unveiled its brand new solar-powered product, the Electric Wall, leaving the businessmen to wonder where he plans to use all these solar panels. Musk created a $50,000 Lone Star in Boca Chica, Texas. So it's not the rich or lavish residents you might imagine from a billionaire on Twitter. The state acknowledged its unexpected action. Business insiders claim that after the Tesla CEO announced publicly that he wanted to simplify his living, he sold all seven of his California residences in June 2020 and November 2021, netting roughly $128 million. The report states that a profit of around $250 million was made. Their epic fall spending spree came to an end when they sold their $16,000 square foot property in Hillsboro, California with seven rooms and bathrooms, as well as a grand ballroom and flexible library shelves for $30 million. A classy cocktail bar was present. You all are thinking what the cost of such a simple electronic and unique foldable box would be, right? Tesla, a well-known company, appears to have some thoughts on affordable housing. It doesn't sound natural, yes, a sustainable home for $15,000, considering how expensive their other product offerings are. The company states that the house has the weight of 2 tons with 6 by 2 by 4 meters in dimensions. Its solar memory is one Tesla power wall and solar energy for 2 kilowatt hours photovoltaic system for 6 panels. So how is this mobile house working? The battery system, a rechargeable lithium ion battery intended to self-consume solar energy and lessen reliance on solar panels, is the key component of this Tesla tiny house. A Tesla mobile workshop and configurator are housed inside the small home. Future Tesla tiny house owners will receive training from it on how to build a solar storage system for energy for their houses. The tiny solar power plant that powers Tesla house provides all of its electricity. That is pretty astonishing. 
The house also has a configurator that enables you to determine how the apartment can produce clean solar energy using solar cells. The power wall stores the energy so that it can be utilized all day and night. A specific Tesla app can be used to manage energy flow and efficiency. Not only this, with no electrical cables or hot holes, the power wall is perfect for kids and pets. Up to 10 units can be set next to one another on the floor, and the network can be wall mounted. The energy system is waterproof no matter where it is mounted. Almost silent operation, much quieter and softer than generators. Stop wondering about what would be inside this tiny house. Here is something you are all eager to hear. Tesla Tiny House has environmentally friendly wood cladding, a complete kitchen including cabinets, a refrigerator, a washer, and a microwave. Yes, there is a window over the sink, a bathroom with a large counter, folding glass barn door, and deep bathtub, 375 square feet of living space with over 9 feet of ceilings, large doors and windows. A boxable includes heating and air conditioning as well. Isn't this just incredible? Actually, the structure is made to be extremely durable and never break down. Steel foam and concrete are essential components. And they are all tough materials. It can withstand hurricane force winds. There is no drywall or wood. Thus, there is no water damage or mold. The boxable is made of non-flammable materials, yet nothing is completely fireproof. Homes that can be folded into shipping containers constructed in factories are basically boxable homes. Therefore, it's not too difficult to determine what's inside the strange house made of steel, foam, and concrete. Years of development were required before they could decide which materials wouldn't damage the walls. Due to the laminated sheet construction of the floors and roof, they may be moved on public roads. Yes, the Tesla houses are also boxable homes. Shipping and packaging are included in the cost. Other features must be paid for separately. Drainage, electricity, and air conditioning are already installed and connected to the house. This little house only has one story. By fusing more modules with the living area, you can add more. The home has a studio layout and is completely equipped. A home has a small carbon footprint, which is measured in carbon dioxide equivalent and represents all greenhouse gas or GHG emissions from an individual, event, organization, service, or product. You can place your house wherever you like in this fashion. The CEO of Boxable is Paolo Tiramani. The business announced in a YouTube video that it has just built a casita home in Boca Chica for a well-known and top secret client in November 2021. Although no one was mentioned in the film, Boca Chica was a rather peaceful and quiet location prior to Elon Musk and SpaceX establishing a presence there. So it didn't take long for anyone to realize that Elon Musk's Boxable Casita in Boca Chica had been delivered. The founder of Boxable, Galliano Tiramani, claims that there are a variety of reasons why house building has not yet operated in production. Thus, we have investigated and fixed all the issues. He also thinks that the difficulties with shipping logistics are shared by other producers of prefat homes. The goal is that this will be directed at additional housing units, which are rising in popularity in California. Boxable made the decision to create the company in 2017 as a result of this spark. It aspires to industrialize building construction around the world into a production line. Similar to any other object you can produce, a house would be built, brought to your site, and set up within an hour. While some activities during unboxing require heavy apparatus, most of the unboxing could be done by humans. When the outside wall is opened, the other side walls can be seen and the outer wall transforms into the floor. The entire building is covered once the roof is opened. A tiny apartment in a package for one or two people. It has been engineered to be both energy and environmentally friendly. Your regular energy bills will be as low as possible thanks to the use of the low energy innovation to guarantee that the dwellings boxable constructed were made of elements that would not decay. The company spent years prototyping. The fact that even Elon Musk wished to live there shows how great the home architecture is. Musk is currently residing in a 37 square meter studio. His home was built to be boxed. It is a new construction company that specializes in residential units that are simple to install. A mobile home costs $15,000 to purchase. The cost of landscaping, permits, and other utility connections are not included in this sum. Musk has the resources to finish the specifics of his plans and advance modular housing. Musk no longer owns lavish ships and mansions worth millions of dollars. In contrast to the majority of the world's billionaires, he has wanted to live this way for a long time. It appears that Musk has no regrets about his choice. When asked about a small house in Texas, he posted his response. 
We are all aware that Musk's decision to halt Bitcoin transactions for Tesla vehicles is motivated by his concern for the environment. Since he considers sustainability as one of Tesla's guiding principles, his desire to reside in a little home is understandable. Casita Galliano Terramani, the startup company's chief of business development, and their primary product, Home, are based outside of Los Angeles. Alternatives to Boxable claim to have invested years in development and research. The Tesla CEO is happy that he found a way to quickly construct high-quality, inexpensive housing. In fact, the firm already has two of these residences close to the Starbase region. Despite its diminutive size and low cost, Tesla headquarters is not inexpensive in terms of quality. The sidewalls, floors, and roofs of the units are functionally laminated with panels composed of steel and EPS foam, which will not distort and last a lifetime. Boxable Tesla houses assert that their modest residence is incredibly energy efficient. The implementation of LED lighting and technology promotes resident comfort while conserving resources. These houses are robust, snow-resistant in 90% of North America, and retrofittable to suit the other 10%. Compared to traditional homes, tiny houses typically consume less energy and have smaller footprints, which is better for the environment. According to the manufacturer, they are far more durable than the typical building composed of magnesium oxide wallboard. These environmentally friendly materials for mold and mildew resistance, as well as fire resistance, are made to withstand extreme weather conditions like hurricanes. First, it is already known that Musk desires to visit and settle Mars. As per Inc. Magazine, he is trying out the boxable tiny house as the foundation for a home on Mars. Even the barren environment surrounding the SpaceX facility has a Mars-like quality to it. Second, you might believe that Musk is simply upgrading minimalism. However, that way of existence is essential for surviving on another world. I suppose things kind of drag you down, he added. Actually, Elon Musk's drastic downsizing into a tiny residence isn't just a curiosity. He's trying out his dream existence. Although Musk exposed one that didn't even lament the small box house, which is now functioning as the Tesla CEO's principal house, it is excellent to have a tiny boxable casita on such a land. They have departed from this modular mega mansion. What do you think about Musk's new $15,000 home? We're going to go in, in depth into artificial intelligence, which is potentially the, the biggest civilizational threat. But now for the first time, there's going to be something that is smarter than the smartest human. Like way smarter than the smartest human. Elon Musk, the harbinger of technological revolution, steps into the role of a cosmic messenger, solemnly proclaiming a stark revelation the end is near. Well, I mean, I've had many sleepless nights thinking about AI. Mm -hmm. So I am worried about AI on the downside. Mm -hmm. You know, AI is just, a, it's sort of a technology like, like nuclear. Um, it's extremely powerful, um, but it could get out of hand. Well, I, I mean, I didn't think anyone would actually agree to the pause. Um, but I thought, just for the, for the record, I just want to say, I think we should pause. Um, I don't think that, uh, anyway, that the... Why do you want to should pause? Well, I think th there's, there's a real danger for digital superintelligence uh, having negative consequences. Um, I mean, the U.S. Has, very much has the uh, most advanced AI. So this is... You see, like, I, like China's close behind, certainly, and has the resources to scale and to optimize. Um, the, the, the biggest single advances in AI still come from the U.S. and Europe. Yes, because I think, I think this is the kind of thing where the world needs to work together uh, on, on AI to be, it's, it's a really big deal. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. And so if we are not careful with creating artificial general intelligence, uh, we could have potentially a catastrophic outcome. So, no, I think there's a range of possibilities. I think the most likely outcome is positive for AI. With an unyielding demeanor, Musk speaks of an impending conclusion urging us to grapple with the unnerving reality that looms on the precipice of our existence. Well, that, that's what you know, part of this discussion is about. So I've actually met with a number of 
world leaders and to talk about AI risk because I think for a lot of people they don't unless you're really immersed in the technology you don't know just what how significant the risk can be and I think the reward is also very positive so I don't want to be you know I'm not in, I, I tend to view the future as a series of, prob of probabilities there's a certain probability that something will go you know, wrong some probability it'll go right it's kind of a spectrum of, of things and to the degree that there is free will versus determinism then we, we want to try to exercise that free will to ensure a, a great future so you know and, and the, the the single biggest rebuttal that i've gotten among leaders in the west with regard to ai is that well sure the west might regulate ai but what about china because to your point about which countries will have significant leadership in ai china is certainly one of them one of the, the very top you know potentially number one but it but that's not every possible outcome. So we, we need to minimize the probability that something will go wrong with um, digital superintelligence. Um, yes. Um, so I'm in favor of AI regulation because I think advanced AI is a risk to the public and anything that's a risk to the public, there needs to be some kind of referee. That referee is the regulator. And so I think that, uh, that my strong recommendation is to have some regulation for AI. His words become a somber mantra, echoing through the chambers of contemplation, forcing us to confront the fragility of our mortal coil and the impermanence of our endeavors. We're at a very interesting juncture in the world from a technology standpoint. If you say there's so many things happening, if you were to plot the various types of technology on a chart, in the modern era, and I'd say even just like really the last 20 years, certainly the last 100 years, from the dawn of human civilization, the growth of technology just looks like a wall. It's a technology is improving at sort of a hyper exponential rate. And we obviously want to make sure that the technology is something that benefits humanity and to the greatest extent possible. So, and we're going to go in, in depth into artificial intelligence, which is potentially the, the biggest civilizational threat. I say potentially, so I'm trying not to be sort of a whatever, a scaremonger or something. But when you're talking about having something that is an intelligence far in excess of the smartest human on Earth, you have to say, at that point, who's in charge? Is it the computers or the humans? And, you know, there, there's some interesting ratios that I think are, are quite profound, like one of them being the ratio of digital to biological compute. So you should take also the, all the human brains and then all the, the computer circuits and you say, what's that ratio? The ratio of digital to biological computers is increasing dramatically every year because the population of Earth is fairly static, but the output of silicon is dramatically increased. So and basically at a certain point with the percentage of compute that will be biological is very small. And anyway, it's, it's some of these technologies like, and I'm a technologist and I bear some responsibility for the creation of artificial intelligence, at least, you know, a little bit. And I think we just want to make sure that we're guiding things to a technological, you know, a positive future and, and reduce the probability of a negative one. As the world listens, Elon Musk's voice reverberates, carrying a weight that tugs at the fabric of our complacency, compelling us to contemplate our legacy in the face of an approaching finale. In terms of um, access to goods and services, I think AI will be usher in an age of abundance. Assuming that we're in a benign AI scenario, um, I think the AI will be able to make goods and services um, very inexpensively. Um, and so, in anything that is a product or a service where there's not artificial uh, scarcity created, um, such as like, I want to live exactly in, in this you know, neighborhood of houses. It's like, okay, well, there's only 100 houses there. So, you know, that, that would still have scarcity. Um, or a unique artwork would have scarcity. But anything that does not have scarcity that we, def that we deliberately design to be scarce will be plentiful for everyone in a benign scenario. <clears throat> I, I think that actually the most likely outcome for artificial intelligence is is that it is good, that it will um, improve our lives, most likely. 
but there's some chance that it will not and I think we just need to be very cognizant of that and, and understand it. it's a powerful technology it's a double-edged sword um, and we need to put a lot of effort into ensuring that uh, we have a good AI outcome and not a bad one mm. what, so, what does a good one look like? well if, I, I'd recommend people read the Ian Banks books okay. uh, the culture books um, that's the best uh, representation of a positive AI human future that I've seen. Okay. Um, so that, that's my recommendation. I mean, it effectively AI, I think it'll, 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 it will massively enhance the human ability. It's like a, just a massive amplifier of human ability. Um, just like the computer was, um, so, really, it's just a question of like, does does it? There's some risk that it doesn't merely amplify human activity, but it starts basically just being in charge. Within this revelation of impending closure, a tapestry of existential reflection unfolds, inviting everyone to ponder the essence of our fleeting existence and the mark we leave behind. Well, I don't. Th I don't think the AI is going to try to destroy all humanity, but it might put us under strict controls. Um, I mean, and there's no non-zero chance of, of it going Terminator. It's not zero percent, but it's it's. I think it's a it's a small likelihood of, of annihilating humanity, but it's not zero. We wanted that probability to be as zero as close to zero as possible. Um, and and then, like I said, the uh, of AI assuming control for the safety of all the humans. And taking over all the, all the computing systems and weapon systems of Earth. I mean, AI is definitely going to be a massive disruptive force. I mean, it, AI is probably the the most disruptive technology ever. Um, I mean, the crazy thing is that, you know, the the advantage that humans have is that uh, we're smarter than other creatures. Like, if we got into a fight with a gorilla, the gorilla would definitely win. Um, but we're smart, so. But now for the first time, there's going to be something that is smarter than the smartest human, like way smarter than the smartest human. And uh, as you can see from the journey, the art that AI can create is incredible. It's so beautiful. And it does it, you know, within seconds. So we're at, I mean, I think, you know, there's that sort of saying, uh, may you live in interesting times, which I think is like, not exactly a good thing sometimes, uh, but but would we actually live? I think we live in the most interesting of times. Um, the advent of AI, and I actually thought to myself at one point, like, uh, should you know, do I re would I really want to be alive at this point? Like, let's say that there is some AI Armageddon um, that happens, some sort of AI apocalypse. I think I would still be want to be alive at this time to see it, <laughs> and hopefully, you know, hopefully not not cause it um, <laughs> but it's it's just a I think we live in an, an, an extremely interesting time you know because um, the things that you see AI being able to do now it's going to do much more with each passing year um, cars will absolutely drive themselves better than any person could drive the spotlight narrows on Elon Musk a messenger unafraid to convey a grim truth provoking us to consider the impermanence of our journey in this vast cosmos. Uh, yes, that, that's what I mean by it. like AI uses as a weapon. Right. Um, and the, the pen is mightier than the sword. So one of the first places we have to be careful of AI being used is in social media to manipulate public opinion. So the, the reason that uh, Twitter is going to a primarily uh, subscriber based system um, is because it is dramatically harder to create it's, it's like oh, 10,000 times harder uh, to create a, an account that has a verified phone number from a credible carrier that has a, a, a credit card and that pays a small amount of money per month um, and have those credit cards and phone numbers be highly distributed, not clustered, is in, in incredibly difficult. Um, so whereas in the past, uh, someone could create a, a million fake accounts for a penny a piece. Um, and then manipulate, have have something appear to be very very much liked by the public when in fact it is not, or promoted and retweeted when in fact it is not. 
is the, this popularity is, is, is not real and essentially game the system. So the, the bias towards uh, a, a, a subscription-based verification, I think, is, is very powerful and that really you won't be able to trust uh, any social media company that does not do this uh, because it will simply be overrun with bots to such an extreme, extreme degree. In this age of introspection, Elon Musk stands as a guide, challenging us all to recognize the transience of our worldly pursuits and encouraging us to find meaning in the moments that define our fleeting lives. AI will certainly be very disruptive because yeah. jobs will be different. Um, so no, I think the, the rate of change, the rate, the change caused by AI is going to be pretty radical. So there, there will, you know, a lot of jobs that are that currently exist won't exist in the future. But I think there will be new jobs. Um, and I, I do think, like in a, in a benign AI scenario, we we will really have an age of abundance. Um, the I think really goods and services, unless they're artificially made scarce, like like it's specialized artwork or you want that particular house in that neighborhood, um, like it has to be an artificial scarcity. But anything that is not made artificially scarce will be plentiful as in a benign AI scenario. You'll be able to have any products and services you want. I think that's something we need to be on lookout for in, in a big way is to make sure that this we're minimizing the impact of AI manipulation. Um, we're very, certainly very much taking it, taking that seriously at X, X Twitter, you know, X, X slash Twitter, and um, and I think we're putting in place all of the protections to um, minimize and certainly detect when we see large scale manipulation of the system. Um, but but if, if, you, if you like to say what is an, what is an economy? An economy is GDP per capita times capita. Now, what happens if you don't actually have a limit on capita? If you, if, if you have an unlimited number of uh, sort of people or robots, um, it's, not, it's not clear what meaning an economy has at that point, because you, ha you have an unlimited economy, effectively. Um, so, so, like on the good side, the, the plus side of AI is that I think we are heading for an age of abundance, um, where any goods and services that you want, you can just have. Um, so that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the positive side of, of, of AI future is an age of abundance. Exactly. So it's like, how do we find meaning, um, and relevance? Yeah. Um, if you have an age of abundance where the computer, you just ask for anything and get it. Um, it, it is something we'll have to struggle with that. That'll, that'll be, uh, I don't know. It's. I think that's kind of most likely where we're headed is an age of abundance. Mm. Um, but it will definitely cause some existential angst. <laughs>